Man. All right, so we're live. Um, this is Ed Campos, episode 14, uh, building, creating relationships online. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me let me introduce you first. So first of all, I, I got to, you know, beat this guy, keynote extraordinaire, presenter. He goes around a lot of places, but why I, I, uh, I really wanted to bring him in mostly was the what I've seen him do with set up online communities and so a lot of times we say things like online it's not personal or online you lose that human connection and yet I look at homeboy over here and he's building connections in ways that really aren't possible in a physical space and then I see him uh, building communities, like empowering adults, you know, so those are typically like the things that we talk about with students, but it's been like pretty, I, I've learned a lot and it, it's, it's changed a, a little bit uh, or a lot of bit on how I see the potential for online communities. So uh, if you want to go ahead and take the, take the lead here, introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, man. Uh, Eddie, dude, it's an honor. You know what I mean? It's been a while since I've seen you, too. So just that alone right there is cool to do this. Um, my name is Ed Campos. I uh, I work currently for Kings County Office of Education. Uh, partially, it's a 50% of the time I do that. Uh, I'm a computer science, math, and education technology consultant. And then um, the other 50% of the time is kind of uh, my genius hour, I think, like if you've heard of that type of thing, you know, I purposely chose to not have a um, 100% job this year. Actually, in fact, I don't think I ever want a 100% job. I always want that 20% uh, genius hour because uh, a lot of the um, the cool things, you, I mean, the humbling things you were saying right now, uh, you know, very nice. But those are like things that I've been able to do because I've had like some this uh, extra uh, flexible time, you know, and to do things that I'm passionate about and, and kind of just go with it, you know, so, uh, and that stuff wouldn't have happened if, if I had a, uh, just a like 100% nine to five. I mean, not, not saying that, you know, you can't do that, but I've had more time to play in the sandbox, you know. Damn, um, that's cool, man. So can you let everybody know first, just uh, like your path into education, kind of some of the things you've done. If you haven't checked out his, his fall Q keynote from about a year ago, I believe, uh, it was fire goes into math goes into it, it was it's cool man you got to check it out but you tell us a little bit about how how you became the you know the man you are now sir yeah man I mean I, I grew up I'm in the Central Valley you know from the Central Valley like you uh, I grew up in a little town called Early Mart California um, I think the uh, you know it's in current uh, it's the last town in Tulare County right before it hits Tulare, uh, Kern County uh, by Delano and uh Actually, growing up, I didn't um, didn't really want to go into education, to be honest. You know, because uh, I'll be honest, like growing up uh, without a lot of money, you just I just kind of like, you know, looked at like I just got to go to college, get, make some of that money, make some of that cheddar. Uh, I had an uncle that was in law school, and he used to drive nice cars. And my other uncle was uh, was getting his MBA, and <clears throat> he used to you know dress real sharp. I was like, oh, I think I want to do that stuff. Um, and then I got. Went to UCLA, ended up um, like my last year in school, a friend of mine, <clears throat> a good buddy of mine that I was, I was taking math classes with, uh, Gabriel Reese, he said, hey, uh, we, we, gotta, we should learn the program. We should learn the, this programming thing. Everybody's doing coding and stuff like that. I was like, I don't know what that is, man. I don't have a, is that like computer stuff? Like, I don't have a computer, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what a gigabyte is. You know what I mean? I don't want to, what a RAM, you know? And uh, he was like, no, 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 you could do it, dude, you know, and, and because that guy, like, I actually think back how that guy, like, really changed my life, and I had to thank him recently, I reconnected with him on Facebook, because he, like, pointed me in this other direction that normally we, um, that's the responsibility of, like, counselors, like a high school counselor or something, yeah. you know, to, like, guide you and, t and see yeah. potential in you, but, it, you know, it took a peer uh, that was like, hey, I think you did this, Shh, you'd be good at this, and, um, so me and Gabriel, took, he convinced me to take some coding classes. I got a minor in uh, or specialization in computing from UCLA. And then with that, got a job working in the software industry. So I was a programmer, software consultant for three years uh, for a company called PeopleSoft uh, in the Bay Area uh, in Pleasanton for, for three years. And then um, 
I mean, it was it was cool because I was like making money and I had grown up in early March. You know what I mean? I was like making some good cash. I was traveling. I love to travel. But then uh, I kind of uh, was feeling a little emptiness. I was like, man, this is cool. But it's like, I don't know, people kind of kind of not genuine, kind of materialistic. I wasn't really vibing with the corporate culture. And, you know, um, glad I ended up as a poor kid who ended up, in my mind, making it, you know, from rags to riches to see that the riches ain't all, you know, ain't all as cracked up to be and that the riches uh, present themselves another way and other ways and you can be wealthy another way. So um, then I just kind of realized like, oh, I, mean, I always like helping people, helping my uh, college roommates with math and, you know, loved being in the computer lab, helping people with my, um, uh, with programming projects and stuff, you know, just helping difficult concepts, uh, helping them become easy for people was always like something I really enjoyed and explaining them explaining it to people in a way that I understood it and they seemed to really grasp those things. So that was always fun. So then I was like, oh yeah, I think this education thing is going to be a cool, cool gig. So ended up taking like a 50% pay cut from going from the software industry into education. Um, <clears throat> but really have, haven't looked back, you know what I mean? Like uh, happier than, uh, than I ever have been. And it's the best decision I ever made. I feel like I've contributed to life, you know what I mean? Um, uh, in this thing, and it's, it's not materialistic. Um, and the connections, the people that I've met, I'm surrounded by amazing friends, amazing people, still keep in contact with a lot of students, you know, and then, um, you know, got almost left teaching, to be honest, though, like before, and this, you know, you can watch the keynote that I did was kind of in, at Q, but how Q kind of was like a, like a safety net for me that I was like, man, this, I was kind of getting burned out because I was around some stagnant, you know, just like stagnation, just kind of the same old stuff, information hoarders, people trying to like, give me, give me, you know, my, uh, these are my tests. I'm not gonna share my tests with you and stuff. And then just getting connected <laughs> to, you know, just getting uh, like, like, that's some amazing tests, right? Uh, just getting connected <laughs> to, uh, to like a real different breed of educator that I'd ever met, you know? Um, and, you know, I think like, you know, I have to get a lot, a lot of credit to the Q organization. It really showed me that like education could be a lot of fun. There's a lot of talented, brilliant, generous, uh, amazing risk-taking people uh and and uh you know i think when you talk about building community i think q showed me first like how to connect to that community first and then it you know has just kept inspiring me to bring people into the fold you know what i mean and let people know what it feels like to be connected because uh, it feels amazing you know yeah and how how long ago did you start with q because you you put in some work man you've been doing some presentations for a minute so you're well known in that community right now I mean, I think it was uh, 2012 was when I went to ISTE and then I met some Q people at ISTE in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think I went shortly because I met John Carippo, uh, took like, you know, some other workshops by Q people. I was like, dude, these people are legit. And they're like, they make this stuff fun. They had high energy. Um, mm -hmm learned a lot about how to present information, you know, in a dynamic way. You're like, dude, you can, you don't have to be, uh, what's the name, <laughs> Ferris, Ferris Bueller's uh, teacher, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say, like, I had some amazing teachers, but, you know, Q, like, took it to another level. You're like, dude, you can, like, be yourself, you know what I mean? That's what it's really, like, showed you, like, you know, instead of trying to play the role of a teacher that sometimes we grow up, it's like, you can really feel comfortable being yourself and have your style and your, your teaching swag, you know, and put that spin on it. So um, I think it's probably been like seven, you know, or no, eight, eight, eight years, eight, nine years. So maybe coming on nine. So let me ask you this before this year, up to this year, about how many presentations were you doing a year? Oh, um, I mean, it was a lot, dude. I mean, cause I was, you know, I had, uh, I've been, I still work for the bootstrap program somewhat, but I was working, uh, like mostly like 70% of the time with them too. So I was traveling a lot with them. The bootstrap program out of Brown university was, uh, you know, integrating computer science and algebra, which is like, you know, that, that kind of was the program that pulled me out of the classroom. Um, and, uh, and just kind of merged that passion of being able to travel uh, computer science and math, all, all three things in one, you know? So, uh, so I was presenting a lot with them. I mean, that, that's a lot of what I did was PD and then with Q, I mean, I don't even know if there's a number, probably too much. People probably like, dude, that guy needs to just like <laughs> shut it down already. You know what I mean? We're yeah. tired of your same old whack stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Hey, well, that's going to be my segue into because I wouldn't call it the same old tired stuff. Um, so I, I'm going to segue here into um, uh, your uh, your talent really with um, with creating, a, I would say, spontaneous online uh, collaboration. So very, very spontaneous. Uh, um, but I'm sure you have a method if you want to get into that, that that's cool, too. But so so let me give a, an example on the first one that to me stood out. Um, it's, uh, it's like what the week before schools are going out and the pandemic starting, um, I think this is like March, the middle of March. And then, um, all of a sudden, uh, you and, uh, a couple other people, or, or, or was it just Paul or with another one, or I don't know if the idea you guys came up with it, but, uh, from there, they see there's a, there's this, a midnight pedagogy and all of a sudden there's, um, 15, 20, 25, 30 people showing up. Uh, to every night to talk about uh, and we're talking like people that that had like high roles in education so it was like pretty privileged to sit there and listen to people talk about how they're going through the the issues and what they're solving them and then um, within like two months a month and a half you started setting up uh, free pds and you got a sponsorship and now there's you know, people say, oh, you know, teachers, you know, they're, they're teachers are lazy or teachers, you know, they don't work off the clock. Man, these guys had like a hundred plus showing up for Friday night PD for free, no sign in. <laughs> so talk, just talk about that, man. Talk about like, why did you make that? Or what, like, did you have a method? Like, did you know that what was going to happen? Cause it's still going. Oh yeah. It, it's crazy. It runs itself now. Like it, it got to be a lot, you know, me and Paul were like, we're just running it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it runs itself now Like we have amazing crew, like Don Corliss, um, Craig Yen, Rebecca Remquitz, and Natalie uh, Benda that are just kind of running that stuff now. But yeah, it started, <laughs> funny thing is, dude, it started because, you know, all this stuff hit and I had been in, uh, you know, Zoom meetings, you know, for um, our monthly team meeting, but I never really dove into Zoom. It was just, you know, hey, do this thing, give your check. Yeah. So like, it was, it was actually started from like, I got to figure out how to run a breakout room. Like I heard that these things have breakout rooms. So that's actually, and I just tossed it out on Twitter. Like, Hey, uh, I'm going to open a zoom. Does anybody want to jump into this zoom and help me like run a um, test out breakout rooms and we can learn how to do this together. So then I think there was like, it was really cool because people from all over, cause I put it on Facebook and Twitter. And so people that are not in education, just friends, it was like a, uh, like, this is your life. You know what I mean? Like folks that I hadn't seen in years that, that just jumped in. Hey, what's up, Ricardo Marmolejo? You know what I mean? Like old school cats I used to have some beers with back in the day. And they were like, um, they're like, yeah, dude, let's test this out because I need to get this going for my job too. So we um, we ended up getting it going and then I shut it down, but the link was still on Twitter. And then Paul Gordon was like, hey, I want to jump in. I was like, bro, we just finished, but let's do it again. And then, so I jumped in. And then more people jumped in and then more people, and then, um, and then we just like stayed on for a long time, dude, like with, with me, Paul and them and me and Paul have hung, you know, I've gotten to know Paul Gordon, like, uh, really well. He's one of my favorite people like you that I've met in the last couple of years. And, um, we ended up with that group with Paul, we ended up stayed on there for quite a few hours. And so everybody's like, we learned so much, you know, cause there was just so much uncertainty, like there still is, but we were like, oh, we found solutions. We found, you know, people, we got help. And now I feel like leveled up. So it's like, hey, you guys want to do this again tomorrow? Okay, let's do it again. So um, we ended up trying to do it again. And then the, what happened was Paul was like, uh, I go, he goes, you want to do this every day? I'm like, I don't care, dude. We're not doing nothing. I'm just staying home, ordering DoorDash <laughs> every day. You know what I mean? Like, we're like, yeah. what, am I, what are we going to do? Let's figure it out. And then try and figure this thing out. Like how, what's the distance learning thing and everything, just kind of coping with stuff and kind of leaning on each other, even, you know what I mean? Almost turned into like, um, like zoom therapy, you know, yeah. uh, like out of the need, out of the need for connectedness and just the need for safety, you know what I mean? And um, so, so it's funny because it ended up being uh, like Paul and I, we, we go back from like the Q events hanging out late, late after everybody's done with other with other people like but you know we were kind of the core jay Sorensen, you know what i mean um <clears throat> christina bustamante you know like people that just hang out super late after everybody's done and then we'd end up having some beers or whatever and then end up ordering like pizza uh late night you know like around midnight and like whatever yeah. 
And then, uh, so we said, yeah, we should call this midnight pizza. It's kind of like, uh, we should hang out again. And then, uh, but we ended up because the hashtag midnight pizza was already taken. Paul came up with midnight pedagogy and he said, I can, you know, I got to put my, my young into to bed. So if we meet 10 to midnight, then I can put him to bed and I can hang out. I was like, I don't care. Whatever. I'm not doing, <laughs> we're not doing it. I'm not doing anything. And people, people showed up, bro. And, and like you said, like, it was just, we were learning. Oh, how do you do this? Oh yeah. Let me show you how to do this. How do you yeah. screen share and do this? And what's the best whiteboard app, you know, and then check out Jamboard and you know what I mean? Check out all these other tools. And then um, I have a good relationship with the white book company and uh, they, they have an amazing product, you know? And, uh, and so I just reached out to them. I was like, Hey, you know, you guys want to, we're thinking about doing this like slice of PD, like just having a special, you know, since we were meeting every night, 10 to midnight, um, since dang i mean since what like that's like three four months going it was, it was march april right? may june july dude it was, yeah yeah it went on so, bro it's still going <laughs> that's crazy when you think about that and uh damn because like i hardly don't even go anymore because i'm so busy but like it, it's still running um i'll probably go tonight and uh yeah, so then we, we ended up running PD and then White Books, yeah, we'll sponsor, you know, and it's like, dude, it doesn't hurt to ask. And so I asked White Book and they were cool. And I was like, hey, so, you know, since this thing is kind of like it started with pizza, could you sponsor like a raffle prize of giving a pizza away to uh, somebody and um, and then give give a White Book away? And we're going to do like 30 minutes of PD, just a quick snippet. And then we're just going to hang out on a Saturday night, you know, and just and they were like, cool. And they've still sponsored us to this day. You know what I mean? So for, uh, you know, five months, whatever, going on five months, and they're still sponsored us. And like, I wasn't even there for that one the other day with the Pear Deck Nearpod showdown, but I heard that thing was massive, dude. Yeah. And like, I heard a lot of people showed up. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, it wasn't like anything planned. It just happened to happen. And then, you know, and like, uh, when you showed up, you know what I mean? It was like a lot of people that you kind of knew. And then you're like, you got them to know them a lot better. Yeah. And everybody would kind of bring their, their struggle or their success at that time. You know what I mean? And it was, uh, I mean, it was, it is, you know, it, it is still going, you know, it's still, still needed. yeah. You know, man, one of, the, one of the things that I always think about the, uh, so one of my favorite uh, rock and rock and Espanol bands is uh, Jaguares. And then before Jaguares, they were Caifanes. And one of the things uh, the, the main, the lead singer, he said, he said, you know, when I made a uh, Jaguares, I wanted to make a space where people could come be creative and it wasn't dependent on one person. And so then, you know, people can come and people can leave as they wish. And, uh, you know, and no one owns the space. It's just, uh, you know, it's there for people to enjoy. And so I think kind of like you said, that space, different people coming, different people going, different people taking ownership, different people leading, following, like what? That's different, bro, because that's not how typically you see, um, that's not what we think of as leadership, really. You know, leadership, we think of, you know, like the hero, like we got to have the hero, the person that <laughs> always is there, the face. But um, like what, uh, I don't know, like why, you know, and you're comfortable with that, bro. Like you came in, you know, you helped set something up, you brought a bunch of people in. You know what I mean? And then like, you're able to like come in, step out, like, like where, where does that come from? Like, is that like a philosophy? Is that like, just like a way of doing it? Or was that just like the circumstances? I don't know, man. I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's like education. It's not any one person. It's just for, it's for everybody. Um, yeah. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest. A lot of it has to do. So I do a lot of meditation um, and, um, one of my uh, my favorite meditations is on interconnectedness, and it totally resonates with me. Like, uh, and it's um, the you know the short end of the the summary of it is that you know you can uh, you have you live we're all nodes we're all in a web the all of our life every person is a web and like a jewel you know and and this this jewel every jewel is a is a reflection of each other. So we're all like reflections of each other. It comes from a Buddhist, uh, a Buddhist idea, the Indra's net. And so we're all reflections of each other and all of our vibrations, like uh, they, they influence each other. You know what I mean? So, and like, if you can really concentrate on your, um, on how connected you really are. And like, when you even, you know, think about things like just 
receive all the support and, you know, as, as you're breathing in and stuff and just kind of think about people that have wished you well and that have supported you that you've learned from, you know, friends, family members, current and passed away, you know, our family members that are no longer with us that have, you know, made us who we are. And then like, you know, that you just really like swell up with that gratitude and like, you know, take perspective. It's like a, um, it's like a systems overview of your life, you know, so you, you can, and then as you're like, uh, you know, in the, in the meditation is like, when you breathe out, you just exhale all that, um, all that thanks and all that appreciation back out. And then as good of a feeling as it made you feel, you just give it all away because it's not yours. You know what I mean? So like, and I, I think that's the thing, I think that meditation has really influenced me more than, than, uh, than I know, because, um, it's, you know, it's not yours and like, Hey, you give it away and you see, you know, it's a lot of, uh, right now. I mean, we're, I don't really like that term uh, socially distant because I think we're just physically distant, but I feel like probably more socially connected than I've ever felt in my life, you know, and when you put an intention to it and you can utilize these tools that we're using, like I would feel super socially distant if this thing went down in like 1985, you know what I mean? I would be, uh, maybe playing my Nintendo, uh, you know, Russian attack or something like that in my room and not doing much else, but like, these tools that we have are pretty amazing. Do the fact the fact that we can see video, see people's faces and smiles, and see emotions, or see their stress, and have empathy for someone. You know, um, I mean, we still have a lot of human connection. We're just not in proximity to each other. So, I don't know. I think, uh, especially this time, you know, and and around that time when we're trying to figure out this space. I think you were a big part of it in that. Like how creative can we get in this space? You know what I mean? To just uh, connect with other people through um, a tweet, through a Zoom, through a hashtag. You know what I mean? Because um, everyone was looking for something and like, what's the alternative? You just like kind of close up, look inward. But like, if you look outward, we're actually super connected, man. There's a lot of help, a lot of people reaching out to help us out, you know? Hey man, one of the, so when you're talking about like, um you know, when you exhale and you give it away, it made me think um, the, uh, so the, the last podcast I had is a, uh, he's a principal, cool guy, man. He's a Bruin too. So I'm a, uh, right now I'm a, uh, I'm going to streak with Bruins. And uh, <laughs> he said, um, he said, allow myself to leave people more opportunities uh, than I had. And then um, I would, I wrote it down. It reminded me of a, of an old kind of a, I think it was, I, I read it in a book by Eduardo Galeano, where he said that, uh, it was in South America, I believe, uh, an indigenous tribe that the kings would do a competition to see, or the tribe leaders would do a competition to see who could throw away the most possessions into the, into the ocean. And like the person who threw away the most was like the, the one that was celebrated and that won. Then uh, I remember um, I had a friend in, uh, in high school, he was, he was Mormon and um, someone, was, uh, someone was trying to give him a hard time about, about tithing. And then he said, you know, well, we believe that, you know, what you give away, you also get back in blessings. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, for a minute, I've been saying the, uh, you know, man, dude, the, like the more you pour in, the more your heart you pour into it, like, and the more like you do, like out of your self, like selflessly, like the more comes back. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like that, what you're talking about, like, I've seen it. I've seen it across a lot of levels and I think that's powerful, man. I mean, you know, like what else, you know what I mean? What else can we do, bro? Other than, than give away the, the great, the, the great things that we got. And like you're saying, the creative space, um, we're, we're going to get to that part in a bit, bro. Cause I think you're more on the artist side than on the, <laughs> than on the anything side, the artist formerly known as Ed Campos. <laughs> um, but let, let me go, let's segue into, um, so then the next thing I saw that was really legit, and I think now it makes sense to me, especially seeing like your philosophy, because uh, you were the, are you still the board member at CVQ? Yeah, I'm, I'm the president. Yeah. Okay, or the president, there we go, sorry. Um, yeah. Presidente, disculpe, senor. And um, so <laughs> um, the, uh, you guys held, uh, so this is the springtime, you know, people are wondering, can we hold an online conference? Can we not? Will it be engaging? Will it not? Will people want to come? Is it too soon? You know, there's a lot of issues going on. And then, um, Senor Presidente, uh, you guys, uh, you guys hold an event over there with CVQ, where the the limelight is well shared across, you know, a lot of faces. 
And, um, but uh, again, like the space, dude, that conference was fire, bro. And, um, and it was online and you guys had people from across the US, across the, <laughs> across the ocean and uh, uh, like kind of talk about, because I know you guys put midnight pedagogy into that too. Like, so you blended, I saw you guys blend like multiple online spaces, but talk about like what, uh, cause I could see it now your leadership philosophy, like you're not, you know, like you're, you're not taking in, you're like pushing out, giving away a lot. Um, I don't know, talk about that process because that was, that was fire, bro. That was what, that was, a, that was a dope little conference. Yeah, man, that was, uh, I keep saying, I tell our board, like, I wish we would have had like a documentary, like written about that process of, of from, from idea to finish, you know, because um, at that time, like it was exactly what a lot of people needed, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, um, I think it's something that we can really hang our hat on with, with CVQ, you know, uh, Central Valley Q. Uh, yeah, it was, I mean, I'll be honest, dude, like, I never thought I'd be the president of anything other than the like hair club for men. Cause I saw my, my grandpa's hair and they told me that I was going to get his hairline. I was like, damn, I'm screwed. You know what I mean? But luckily mm -hmm. I got like hell hair, but uh, you know, I ended up, ended up in a position being president, you know, like, so you do, this is crazy. Never had a leadership position before, but um, I really just try and come from it. Like, uh, you know, I just have a lot of friends on the board. We have, a, I'm a big fan of John Wooden's leadership philosophy, talking about another Bruin. I think like there's not many others who like put it all together like him, you know, uh, when you have like the pyramid of success and his like, you know, friendship to me is really important. Um, and I think, you know, if you're a president, you're, you know, you have your members in, in your charge and they're your friend, but you take care of your friends. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take care of my friends. Um, and I have a lot of talented friends and we have a lot of talented friends on our CVQ board. And one of my things about taking care of people is like not wasting their time either and allowing the talented people to showcase talents. Like, cause the big, one of the biggest frustrations I have in education is like spending time in a room with talented people where we don't get to collaborate. We don't get to do what we do well and share our skills with each other. So we fixed that this year and like let people do what they wanted to do. You know, we switched up some things uh, with the way we, we ran our board. And then with this, um, when everything hit, I honestly thought, um, so we, we started, uh, I, I think there's a big part of this that happened with um, our, our, my friend of mine, Christian Vondeler, he runs uh, this uh, program called Eduscrum USA, uh, eduscrumusa.com. And uh, he came and uh, to our CBQ retreat in August and he's actually going to come back uh, next week or in a couple of weeks when we have our next one to, to do our retreat again, uh, to really get us all on the same page, have a shared vision, um, you know, contribute to our goals and who we are, who our identity is. And uh, like just the process he led us through, like um, really changed the way we ran board meetings. So we would have almost like breakout rooms before breakout rooms were a thing, like breaking out into committees during the thing where before it was super linear, very boring. Um, so people would ideate in the committees and I honestly thought, bro, this is the God's honest truth, is that when all this hit, I was like, okay, it's about to be crazy. We're probably just going to ride this thing out, you know, um, and uh, just like offer like one or two things a week, like that each of us can have, you know, just chill because everybody's job is going to be swamped. And then uh, so we split out like our, we have like a marketing communications committee and like an events committee split a breakout. And then our events committee um, led by Susan Stewart, uh, Gloria Casares, uh, Martha Thomas uh, and uh, Jen Almansar, like some amazing, they were like, we want to run an event. I was like, okay, let's do that then. You know what I mean? Everybody down, let's down. And uh, you know, just kind of letting everybody do what they do well you know, everybody's like, okay, um, we, you know, we can run it on this Fourth um, of July, and not Fourth of July, the May the Fourth weekend. Have it finish on May the Fourth on Monday, so it could be Star Wars themed. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So came up with a, with a good name, you know, Episode Twenty Twenty, A New Hope. Um, we started marketing it, you know. I think like I've got a really good friend who does some amazing graphic design work, so I think 
coming up with that name and getting the the branding out there early. You know, it's been a big commitment of mine to help rebrand CVQ and, and uh, you know, give us some high quality stuff to push out there. Sure. So I think the event, even from the get-go, just looked like, like, who this is like a little more high budget than what it was, but we were like shoestring budget stuff, you know? And then like, it just grew, it just grew. It was like, normally we have like 150 people attend our events if we're lucky. There were like a thousand plus that registered <laughs> and from around the world. And then um, like about four to 500 attended every day, you know, and uh, Susan, the events team just crushed it. You know what I mean? Like pull, uh, did all the heavy lifting, um, you know, Scheduling so we, was flawless. yeah. And we, uh, we ended up, you know, like you said, uh, we did some creative things, you know what I mean? Cause we didn't just have uh, like kick-ass sessions which we did, we had like top notch presenters that came presented for free. You know, we started having um, like weekly community building mixers leading up to it. You know what I mean? Keeping with that community building, like building anticipation. We had like a, some distance learning uh, mini grants that we were giving out at the time. So we had like a, um, like a yo, yo Q cribs type of thing for people to showcase their like, uh, their distance learning crib and their green screen setup with their mics and their headsets or whatever because this was all new you know they had the new classroom uh so we had like a flip grid going with that you know we were trying to generate a lot of buzz and then even the day of the days of uh we decided like hey let's weave the midnight pedagogy in there uh because in our schedule the way it was set up that we had a half an hour gaps in there and uh initially we weren't going to do anything you know and just let um let, let teachers like, hey, just go to the, you know, uh, get something to eat, you know, feed your kids, do some laundry, whatever. Uh, but I was like, oh, let's just do something. Let's fill that space up. Like, well, you know, if it's like, I'll fill it up. So I volunteered to like me and Paul kind of took the, uh, took it on us and did some midnight pedagogy, um, like little slice, uh, a slice of PD for those 30 minutes. And like, that was fun. It was just fun stuff. We did Instagram story stuff. You did the, the Quentin Quarantino. We had a, uh, the Quentin Quarantino presents too. That was one of the my favorite ones. Uh, the stuff that you do with video, like. Hey, let me backtrack though and tell them. So the uh, so if so, when they were running Midnight Pedagogy, the on Fridays the sessions on things they were presenting were like unconventional things that we normally don't present at conferences. So they were doing like sessions on TikTok, sessions on Instagram, set like and so then in between conference because i remember you guys talking about it like where people learn the most is like in the hallways and in those conversations and so you guys were like how do we not how do we let people keep coming in and so then you how long were those sessions you essentially presented many sessions but the crazy part because that was the next part I, was, I wanted to lead into was those little mini sessions that were like the filler sessions were fire bro and like everybody came to those sessions everybody came to them and yeah. um so, all right. So now hop into it. Like what were, you said like the Instagram live. And so hop into what some of those little mini sessions were. Yeah, we did. I think the Monday one we did was like um, Instagram story time. I think that's what I called it. So like, I know when Lori, uh, um, Lori uh, Jones or Big Hoppa, I call her Big Hoppa, but uh, out of the Bay Area, she, uh, EdTech Yoda, she showed me Instagram, how to do stories on Instagram a long time. Like, dude, this is amazing. Like the multimedia stuff you can add with the gifts and the music. Um, so I was like, all right, well, let's just create some Instagram stories that are Star Wars themed and then tweet them out. And then people would get entered into the raffle and stuff. So it was, uh, it was nice because it was like super, it was giving them teaching a quick storytelling device, like how to, you know, digital storytelling, but also it was adding to the connectivity because it was super public because we were trying to get into the raffle uh, and they were like tweeting out, Oh, episode 2020 CVQ, a new hope, you know, um, and like our, our social media um, chair uh, co-chairs, uh, Adam Juarez and Kat Goyette, like at one of the meetings a month later, they were like, yeah, we got like all kinds of Instagram followers. Like for some reason around me, I was like, Oh yeah, because I did the Instagram stories. And like I, we bribed them to like, <laughs> you know, yeah. to get on Instagram and tag us and stuff. Uh, so like we did that one, we did um, we did a, a Iron Chef with the with uh, like eighties movies with like Golden Girls and Cheers, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, 
we did uh man what else did we do that was a long time ago because the thing is we've done it multiple times like q bold didn't ask me and paul to do that for we're q going bold, to that so. one next hold that thought yet still yeah we're going to that one next all right yeah. so this is something i'm picking up now because this is a conversation i had with people today this morning and uh, so what you're doing is um you're not talking to people like just like sharing straight out you're inviting them into a different space so when you set up midnight pedagogy that wasn't like your chance to hey man listen to me it was your chance to hey man everybody come and hang out this is uh you know we're all in this together when um you were doing the cvq the environment and the vibe that you guys were putting out was hey you know i know it's tough come over here you know and, and join our community and then when you're doing those little mini sessions, you're not just talking to people and tell, you know, and doing a little lecture presentation, you're again taking that time to invite them into a totally new space. So what you keep doing now that I'm noticing it is you keep opening these spaces and letting people come in and then like have dialogue. So you're opening spaces and allowing like dialogue to take place. And that brings us to the next one, which was super fire, the Q bold. And, um, uh, but this is what I want to tell you too, though, because I'm a, so I'm a, I'm an art school dropout and, um, and like, uh, uh, basically like I'm a failed artist too, but, but like, I consider like, like I, I've, I failed it so much, bro. But like, to me, like my art is education. Like I love, I love education, but I love it like mm -hmm. as an art form. And mm -hmm. so, but when I would be around friends that were artists, like into like, that was like in that industry, like multimedia and stuff. Like they they would be like movie houses. There would be um, like production studios. People that would handle titles. People that would handle um, you know certain effects. And then it was funny because then out of nowhere I see Midnight Pedagogy essentially being like a little movie house or like a little uh, a little niche house. And then you guys are showing up to Q Bold, and now like you leveled up like another couple levels because those little mini sessions were again like really fire. So um, tell us about Q Bold, and then we're going to talk about like education as art. But like, tell us about Q Bold. Like, what was that? Okay, so Q Bold. Here's I gotta I gotta give you uh like give you some shine real quick because like the energy that when we started Midnight Pedagogy, like the creative ideas that you would bring to like because uh, people don't know about the gifts that you would create video when I would be doing really dumb stuff in my Zoom window and you would be creating these gifts of me like fighting the uh the tiger king and stuff like that i forgot about that <laughs> and, and so so what people don't know is i gave uh, i gave eddie gonzalez the the nickname quentin quarantino because of his mad uh, uh mad production skills and then we um we did a, a a midnight pedagogy quentin quarantino we did that during cvq right where we did yeah uh, but that one was just like okay so late all right all right so let me say this, what I liked about what you guys were doing, bro, is you guys just like, like I didn't have to do a proposal. It was nothing like that. It was like, bro, be yourself. And I was like, yeah. what does that mean? Like, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, you would like what people are not seeing and you, you have to see the videos to believe it. Like you'd be like, okay, let me have everybody do this dance in your own window and I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna do something like this. And we even did like the break dancing arm wave, the little the TikTok. Did. The, the TikTok dance and had all these dope <laughs> gifts and like it was just fun dude it was like Hollywood Squares you know uh and uh what is it the Brady Bunch on like you know to the hundredth power and then when when you did when we did that one um at CVQ and then we did it at the uh, Q Bold again right but we, did we do then we did a lip song right we did the lip sync with uh and so that was so fire, bro, because we did, um, what's the song we did again, dude? I forgot. It was the journey one, the journey one. Right. Yeah. And so you did the journey song. You're like, okay. And then the way you planned it was like, all right, everybody. And that was during the Tosas and Mimosas one on the last day. Right. So we started this thing on midnight pedagogy, Tosas and Mimosas. Like, Hey, normally at Q events or any event, like you can't bring alcohol, but like, dude, you're in your own home. Like just, you know, get your drink on whatever, get your beverage, get water, coffee, whatever you want. And then, um, but we had toasts and mimosas, everybody's an adult, you know, and then, and then, uh, you know, little uh, uninhibited, 
You know what I mean? And uh, so they're like, okay. And then I like how when you directed everybody like, yeah, go grab some props, go grab like a broom to play the air guitar on. Somebody go grab a mic. If you got a wig, grab a wig. You know what I mean? So we're, we're talking about like the props. And I think at that time I had like bought my Amazon bin of props because I knew this this uh, shelter place was going to last a long time. Yeah, I got the horns right here. You know what I mean? I got, I got this thing, you know, all this stuff. Got the astronaut helmet from... Uh, from Ben Cogswell, all that stuff. <laughs> but when you when you got us to film a music video, a lip dub on Zoom, um, was like amazing, dude. And then the the fact that we recorded it and you had it like, like published on YouTube, like, like within like forty five minutes or whatever. And then when I shared that with Carippo, with John Carippo, and I was like, did you see this? He was like, dude, you guys have to do that to close out the conference. So now what you're talking about is like this, this crazy idea that we started, like, let's just entertain people during the passing period. You know what I mean? Let's be the class clowns in the passing period and give people like a chance to, to have some fun stuff and let loose. And then now it was like, we got called up to the big leagues almost, right? Like, Hey, yeah. Oh dang, we gotta, we gotta do this. But I think you were busy. So me and Paul had to like take your place, which like, I we can never, I went yeah, camping. You were, you were camping. <laughs> And uh, I think we messed up all kinds of stuff, dude. We don't, we're not Quentin Quarantino for sure. But but the fact that we got called up to, to the bigs leagues because of um, your ideas, our ideas, you know what I mean? Everybody, that this energy that we had created was really amazing. It's like, dude, you know, we, we yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. I was like, hey, let's go. They, they want us, we're, we're on the big stage now. You know, yeah. we're going to go. So uh, that was a, that was a blast, dude. Yeah, man. That, see, that's what I tell. And I, you know, and I feel... Um, I don't know, man. Well, then maybe I got it from you too, but the, uh, that's where I feel like it's like, like that was just the space, bro. It was the space, you know what I mean? And everybody did their part in the, the space, you know? So like when the space opened up and everybody felt free, then everybody got to really be themselves, you know? But if you, if you close that space or you put restrictions, you know, it gets harder to do that. And I know that that's not a, you know, it's just, it's hard, you know, it, that, it's not a, that's, it's, it's not organic, really, you got, you got to work to it, you know, um, and, because uh, you presented like a gazillion times, bro, so, you know, like, it, it's a lot of uh, experience that's gone into being intentional, you know what I mean? When, I think I like, I, 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 I like that I keep hearing you say, like, we're, we're creating the space, and we're opening it up, because that, that's been a big influence on me, too, is this concept uh, that I'm sure you've heard me talk about the Pac-Man rule yeah. uh, by, by Eric, uh, Eric Scholler. I think I'm saying his name, right. Uh, I don't, I don't think he's in education. I think he's like in corporate America, but he wrote this idea about the Pac-Man rule of conferences. You know how like you go to a conference and then you see, um, people that the people that already know them, each other and they're clickish and they're all standing in a circle and, and the circle's closed off. So you have no in and, um, and that's not cool. And I'll be honest, like I've been in queue so long that I have been in, you know what I mean? And I never thought of, I never saw like how it could be clickish. And I'm sure it has been, you know, for a lot of people who feel like, oh, this is not, you know, it's just the, these folks or whatever. I'm sure it has been. I, I had to go to a different conference, a computer science teachers association conference in Omaha um, to experience that, to experience what it feels like uh, again, you know what I mean? To be like... Uh, not having in to even like step into a conversation. So when uh, Eric Scholler talks about the Pac-Man role, he's like, always leave your circle open so that people can join the conversation to add a new voice. And then as people enter, keep opening the Pac-Man so that more and more people, so you should never, and it's honestly changed the way, it changed a lot of the way I am, the way I, the way I uh, sit down at tables in group settings, you know what I mean? Cause you can easily close off the conversation and cause someone can be like, oh, I wanna sit here. And then, you know, if, if you're not always like opening it up to be like welcoming for people to come in, they won't, you know, they, they, they wanna be asked in. And I think that's what, that's something that I'm trying to do uh, a lot, you know, and I think I was maybe doing some of it before but it's definitely a lot more intentional now. And then now it's just happening uh, in a digital space virtually over zooms over hey join this hashtag you know what i mean let's uh you know what i mean let's run this bro, you, 
I would say, bro, you've got past that level already because now I'm going to talk about flatten the curve, flatten the belly. And that's not just opening a space. That's opening a space where people are encouraging themselves to better themselves in something that's really difficult in America, which is, which is like health and like weight. And all of a sudden people are like flatten the curve, flatten the belly, like... <laughs> So you've gone from you've gone from opening the pie to like opening the pie for empowerment. So tell me about that because that's not that's not easy, bro. Like that's not like you know what I mean. Like that's a real struggle for people. Sometimes that's like an emotional struggle. That's like an intent. You know what I mean. That's like a lifelong struggle. But like what basically what possessed you to start that? And then the t-shirts and the fundraising. Like like <laughs> explain all that because that again that's not. You didn't do it like, hey, bro, here's my new uh, my new shirt, you know, or here's why I'm cool. You did it like we're fundraising for this and people bought into it like no other. So so that's you, man. Take it away on that. No, nah, man. I mean, it came from from a struggle, bro. Like I've always struggled with, you know, with my weight and with health and, you know, not taking care of myself. And especially as I've traveled so much, forget about it, bro. It's hard to like you know, um, keep a fitness routine or, you know, eat well on the road when you're in, you know, Chicago eating deep dish pizza all the time or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so like when, when this, um, when the shelter in place hit, bro, I'm not gonna lie. Like my, that week, first week, maybe first two weeks, dude, that was not a good week for me, bro. I was like, this was, I was very sedentary, just kind of, you know, uh, you know, it was a stressful time because no, everybody, I mean, I, I'm not just gonna say myself, but I'm just speaking for myself. Like, you know, I was sleeping way too much and just like uh, zoning out. It was depressing, out. Dude. It was depressing bro. It was a depression, dude. You know, and and I was uh, like, you know, stress eating. You know what I mean? Um, binge watching the BS Tiger King, Puros Mamadas, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, what is it? Ozarks. That was pretty good, actually. I mean, I'm not that gonna lie. That was good. That was Tiger good. King was kind of good, but <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Just like all of it dude in moderation it was gonna be good but there was nothing good it was not good stuff and it was not in moderation you know what i mean the stuff that was happening so um i mean actually you know and then i was uh i like i have a therapist you know what i mean that i've seen i have uh, a friend pass away that was about our age and like just really hit me hard like a couple months before the pandemic um and uh so still had the therapist so then started like trying to work through that and you know she's like yeah everybody's going through this stuff right now it's tough and you know, you just got to kind of like, you know, kind of pause the brakes, kind of get yourself out of this funk or whatever. So I just kind of started like, like getting out the door. Okay, let me just go walk, man, because I wasn't feeling good. You know what I mean? I was feeling down. And I was like, at least if I can feel the sun a little bit, get out walking. So I started walking. And then my sister had used this couch to 5k app a long time ago to like build up to running a 5k. So I'm like, I'm gonna do that. And then little by little, I was like, you know, it starts you off really slow. Because I, I mean, I, I was, you know, I mean, I still am big, but it's, you know, I was a lot bigger now. I couldn't run. And so it was like, walk a minute, jog a minute, walk a minute. That was manageable. I was like, okay. It wasn't an ugly, I mean, it wasn't a pretty walk or run or jog, but it was like, I was getting there and I was sweating. So I'm like, that was good. And I just kept building it up. It's like, all right, I'm feeling good. And then, I don't know, you know me, I'm always trying to come up with some stupid hashtag or something like that. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, flat, we got to flatten the curve. I got to flatten the belly. So I started just tweeting, hey, I'm out here trying to do this. I'm out here trying to do this. So that's just really how it started. Like me kind of poking fun at myself, but but trying to start tweeting to hold myself accountable so that maybe, you know, if I make it public, because I could easily just practice horrible self-care or no self-care in isolation like I was. But if I try and make my, my goal for self-improvement and mental health and physical health like public, I was like, maybe it will help me be accountable, you know? And then, um, and then I started seeing some other people like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that, too. That's funny. You know, that's like a I mean, I've always liked to make people laugh. I think that's, you know, uh, one, yeah. one thing I uh, like it's a goal I have, you know, to release some tension, release some stress. Laughter is good for the soul. And um, so if I can make somebody laugh with a witty uh, hashtag like that and then they're like, yeah, oh, I see. You know, that's kind of cool. And then and I already started in my mind like, oh. I think I should have somebody draw a little, little logo. So I have my former student, Adia Aguilar, draw a logo. And then a lot of people started doing it. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Like people are running people. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, maybe we should like set a virtual 5K. How, what do you guys think for like setting a couple months? Everybody's like, I'm down. So I put a Google form, whatever. And then I was like, 
hey, I wonder if we have a fundraiser. And I was like, what can we raise, uh, raise funds for, you know? And uh, so I got a cousin, my cousin Jessica, she's a, a, she's a nurse at the ICU here in Visalia, Korea Delta. So I had been started talking to her and like, I mean, if you want to put it in perspective, uh, the reality of this, you know what I mean? That the fact that this pandemic is not fake news um, and, yeah. and that this is, this is some real stuff. You should talk with the ICU nurse on the, every week. You know what I mean? Cause I, I talk with my cousin every week and hear her voice and her stories and what's going on and what she's uh, experiencing. And it gets real, real quick. And then it, it takes me out of myself and stops this like pity party, uh, you know, that, that sometimes we have on ourselves. Like, man, there's something so much bigger than us that we can do and if we think about other people. So I said, okay, I'm gonna help raise some money for like her and her, um, and her uh, colleagues. Like, so they can have some dinners that we can buy for them. So I'm like, all right. I told my cousin, hey, I'm gonna raise some money. We're gonna do this race for you guys. So I have my former student, Adia, designed the shirt, um, put it on custom ink you know, um, raised, made the shirt, people bought the shirt. We raised like a thousand, one hundred dollars dude to give to my cousin, dude. She sends me pictures of her and her crew. I said, Hey, can you do me a favor? Like just when you guys grub, like send, send me a picture with, with you guys masked up and just reminding us to mask the F up. You know what I mean? Because people are not taking this serious dude. And this ain't a game. Um, and so she, every week she'll like send me a picture. Hey, cuz here you go. We got grabbing some in and out, grabbing some Thai food. Uh, Cause man, we gotta, we gotta take our su- step outside of ourselves for a little bit. We get wrapped up into our own stuff, um, you know, and, and there's some serious stuff going on. These nurses are putting, they're putting themselves on the line, like super stressed out every day. Um, and so I'm really proud of that. I love my cousin. She works hard as hell. And, um, and then now we're doing it again for some nurses in, uh, we're doing another one uh, for some nurses in Merced County, um, Marsha Carrillo, who started the flat in the curve, flat the belly. She's uh, like from that uh, Merced County, Merced, Modesto area. She like running, dude. she lost like, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. Dude. It was like, dang girl, like she's crushing it. And then she's like, hey, you know, I got my uh, my former student is a nurse. Can we raise money for her and her colleagues? Like, let's do it. So we got that and actually got a website going now, flattenthebelly.org. So if people want to sign up, you can run it. Uh, you know what I mean? And then now it's just going to run itself too. Like you talk about, like, it's not something it's work that I love doing because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a passion. And I spent like a good Saturday getting the, you know, the website up and, and getting some images and stuff. But, um, you know, and then one thing I'm proud of is like, uh, I want to try and just show other people how easy it is to like create these like fundraisers, these virtual fundraisers to raise something for something you care about. So on the website too, at the bottom, it says, you know, if you, um, if you want to raise funds for a project that you're passionate about in your community, um, here's the steps right here, you know, find a hashtag, just own that, stake that out, start tweeting, posting pictures for the cause, whatever, make sure it makes sense. If you need help with the hashtag, I'm good at coming up with that stuff. Like tweet at me, uh, you know, I'll help you come up with that. Um, get some artwork, you know what I mean? And I gave links to like Adia, uh, my buddy Juan Verdusco, my buddy Eddie Ravella, some graphic designers. If people want, you know, they, sometimes people can do their own art, but if you want to pay somebody, get some legit stuff. Um, and then the custom ink side is there. So I'm like, that's the easy dude. It's like one, two, three, you know, you can raise money for whatever you're um, passionate about. I talked to a friend of mine the other day, Ella, Ella Farinas from Pasadena. She said, Oh, I think she was like, I wonder what PE is going to look like in the pandemic. And I was like, what about if it looks like flatten the belly, flatten the curve? Like, and it's a hashtag that's super pub- public and you guys are donating, uh, raising money for your community for like your hospitals or some other thing but encouraging kids to get out there and run and making it public. And she was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to pitch that idea. So, you know, I, um, I don't know. I mean, I think we got to get super creative now more than ever, right? This is the biggest design challenge we've ever been in. You know, it's like MacGyver style. Like, well, can you make a bomb with a piece of gum, uh, you know, popsicle stick and a shoestring? You know what I mean? Like, like, what do we got to work with right now? We got a zoom. I got a webcam. I got a mic, we got a hashtag and we got some ganas. You know what I mean? Like what, uh, and, a, and, a, and a dope Spotify playlist helps, you know what I mean? With uh, Quentin Quarantino's editing skills, that, that never hurts. Yeah, it's crazy, you know, because um, like when all this mess started, um, you know, it's like, man, you know, everybody's staying on your own. And then uh, Compost was like, no, nah, everybody get connected, you know, come and join us from 10 to 12. Then uh, people were like, hey, you know, right now it's too much you know, conferences and 
professional development. Like we need time. And Campos was like, nah, man, let's, let's not, let's hold a, let's hold the best conference. And then uh, <laughs> people are like, teachers are missing that uh, human connection. Hey, let's recreate those hallway conversations right now. Uh, people are like, uh, yeah, but you know, uh, everything with going on how can you make a difference hey let's uh let's activate people to uh to go on and better themselves and then let's go a step further and what are you into and let us help you part pursue yours and so um, so it's cool man that's why i'm saying uh, it's a master class in um building online communities for educators you know and um with yours it was through you know through meditation and you know other things that you have with like i said other people that i've met you know sometimes it's a religious thing sometimes it's a philosophical thing but at the end of the day it's like giving away more than you're taking right um or taking what you need to move on and then making sure that you're giving you're leaving it open for other people to come and, and so it's like a well that's what it is dude it's like a well that everybody can can come and join it's not your well you know what i mean and then maybe you maybe you made a better bucket but then you share the bucket and then and so so what do you say to that bro because that's to me that's leadership and i can name people i know that do that but like how do we get away from like the like hyper like individualism like you know the the very like disney is like, you know, hero, I save everybody. Cause I know you're not going around saying like, I helped everyone lose weight and I showed people how to, you know what I mean? Like, so how do we get away from that narrative of like educational heroes to like, I'm just doing my part. Like what, you understand what I'm saying? How, I I, I don't know. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess the, it's, it's the intention, right? It's a, uh... You know, people go into it with different intentions. Like, I want to have this job for the title. I want to have this job so I can be the boss. Like, I've never wanted any of those things, you know? So it's, I think that's what it is. Like, if you want those things, you're going to get those things. Not that those things are good. You know, I've never, I think I was always scared to like have a title called president and stuff because of the way I've seen, you know, um, I don't know you you put this weird role on that you're like oh I could never do that and it's like yeah I'm right I could never do that because that's not actually leadership that I've seen sometimes you know um but like you know I, I think about uh I mean it really the, the biggest lessons in leadership I've ever seen I bring it back to John Wood and like and the pillars of the of that um pyramid of success are uh are like I think one of my the favorite one that I have is friendship uh his his pyramid about friendship and that you should strive to have um, uh, friendship and be comrades in arms, you know, and, uh, and I think that's what I'm trying, you know what I mean? Like when, when you're, and I know comrade, that word sometimes has a bad co connotation, but, but yeah, but you know what I mean? Like when you're like, I, I'll go to war with my friends, you know what I mean? And then it's because what I've done for them, what they've done for me, you know what I mean? The way we make each other feel um, and I think that's what's leadership, you know, because and we're trying to I think if you're, you we've always got to try to lead ourselves. because I'll be honest, I lead myself in the wrong direction all the time, bro. Like on a daily, it's a, it's a I, I get off the, the path and I got to try and lead myself back. But, you know, and I try to be honest about it, too. Like I'm trying to fake, and think, you know, that, that I'm something else, dude. I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just trying to do the best that I can. Um, but, it, yeah, I think. I think when you have mutual respect and you strive for that, you know, and, and uh, just having empathy for people, I think that, that for me, you know, that's what I, uh, if you want others to be well, you know what I mean? Like, and you want your team to be well, you want your team to strive to, to strive and thrive and just, and honestly, right now, just to be healthy, dude. Like, I think for me, a lot of my motivations is first, I have to want health for myself, which I do, you know, but but because if I can't do that, then I'm not no good for anybody right now. And I, I want these peace, uh, the peace of mind and the success. But, you know, then I want those th same things for everybody else that's in my proximity. You know what I mean? For you, for all the midnight pedagogy crew that give, that give and give, you know. But and I and I feel like just like I got to remind myself, I got to remind my friends like, hey, man, you got to take care of yourself. dude. <laughs> like 
you know i mean we've had this conversation before like we get we get off in this direction and like we got to bring it back because we got families bro like i mean we we love we have our job and stuff like that but our job this i mean even though i love being a teacher and it's a call to passion like i got amazing family my mom my sister my nephews that's the most important thing in my life you know and, and i have extended family like you and everybody but sometimes we, we kind of stray away from that too you know what i mean we got to get back to the the charging station you know the yeah. soul charging station so no it's cool man um yeah thanks bro this has been uh the uh it's been a great uh conversation dude anything else you want to share on your own just on any of the topics we talked about yeah bro so i'm gonna i want to share what my next community i want to build with you what, what, what do you think i'm gonna I, mean, I haven't talked about it publicly yet all right shoot but exclusive 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 we're, we're, <laughs> dj Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh so like when when we've done you know some of these zooms bro like uh that you know the the zoom fatigue that everybody's getting right because they're sitting down for like four hours six hours like you know one of the cool things you know that 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 uh that i love to do is like use music in the zooms right we've done that and like you know, you play the the transition songs, right? Like the welcome back Cotter song when they come back from the breakout room, the, you know, um, the in sync bye 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 when you say goodbye from the Zoom, whatever, you know, like just whatever. Just to, I'm writing that one down, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a, I got the playlist, bro. Like, you know, and I, I have like the little, uh, some little Jeopardy theme songs and then, then the hundred dollar, thousand dollar pyramid or whatever when, you know, so like, the, uh, my buddy Matt Vaudry talked about those music cues and stuff, but and then uh, oh the other one I like is when your uh, when your tech messes up right because you know like oh dude my screen froze or whatever and then uh, my mic got jacked up whatever and then uh, I, I play Taylor Swift shake it off I go hey let's stand up let's shake it off right now I go I'm gonna shake it off because uh, I go this tech it's gonna happen as so I get everybody up shake it you know I've been not too late whatever and then. Uh, so, but I remember we did, I can't remember if we did it in Midnight Pedagogy. I think I did. I think this idea started. That, that was like such a, it was like a little think tank, right? It was like a, like this super creative collaborative space where it was just like, hey, let's take some risks, you know, because what, what else is going on? And like the stuff that you were doing, the stuff, like you inspired me a lot to give it, get even more creative. But um, I started doing these things I would play like cumbia music in Zoom. So I was like, "Hey, everybody, stand up. Let's do a zumbia." I go, "That's that's what we call a a, <laughs> a cumbia over Zoom. We we do a, a zumbia, you know." <laughs> and then and then, uh, and then like so, I've been working with some folks, and they're like, "Oh, dude, I love the editor. We're gonna do the zumbia again." I was like, "Okay." So then I was talking. Here's my next idea. I'm and if it works, up, that's our, I'm about to it, level up, dude. You just. <laughs> it, it, but I'm gonna need your help on this one. If it doesn't work, then you're just gonna crop this part of the uh, uh, part of the video off, right? Like if it was like biggest flop. So like, um, I was talking with um, my friend Nupur Seti. She's uh, from the Silicon Valley Q area, and we've been on Voxer talking. And she was like, "Oh yeah, I love that idea of the Zumbia." She goes, "We should do uh, like dancing over Zoom and teach dancing lessons. Like I could teach some Bollywood dancing lessons, you know." Uh, she's East Indian. I was like. That's actually a pretty dope idea. Yeah. And she goes, what about if we had like, you know, like, cause the, it, and it, a lot of it came from you. You got me this idea of like, dude, everybody's like sitting there all mopey in the Zoom screen, like <laughs> dying, like Zoom, Zoom beat out, right? Like, mom, mom, mom. Zoom you NATO. Know? And then Zoom NATO, dude, it, it's for real, bro. But like, when you plug, when you inject that life into them with music, I'm like, dude, I suck at dancing, bro. I do not know how to dance, but I probably dance more in this shelter in place because I just can't sit on my keister for like four hours. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna do something stupid. And I'm like, well, why not tonight? This is the time to learn how to dance then. So here's my idea. Yeah. We start the hashtag, which it already exists. So I'm not gonna take credit, but I came, I came up with it. And then I looked to see if the hashtag was there, but it's already there. Social disdancing. Social right? Dancing. Social disdancing with the D, dancing. But that one already exists. So I might do, social dis dancing edu you know that like because we're educating people about dancing i want to teach people how to dance in little short clips like hey here's how you do like create the tiktok video and then get your whole zoom doing that tiktok video or do the three amigos video or do a quick um cumbia do a zumbia 
and then film those out and then push those out, right? And yeah. then, you know, she was, um, Nupur was saying like, oh, we could do Bollywood, like that song from Slumdog Millionaire, uh, Hi-Yo, I think, or I, I forget, something like that, but like really awesome, energetic. And you know, the Bollywood dancing is amazing, dude. I was like, dude, I want to learn how to dance some Bollywood stuff. And she goes, yeah, that's cool. I could, I could teach some basic steps and then we could have uh, some of that. And then she was riffing today like, oh, um, it would be cool if we like tried to mix the cultures too, like introducing cultures and we just really pitch it like, what are some different cultures we can learn about through dancing? Because like, we know now more than ever, we need to be le learning more about cultures instead of uh, vanilla. You know what I mean? And like, we need to look at all the, the, the beautiful cultures out there and like, we can actually connect through culture even more and like, and take care of ourselves with health. And like, dude, I want my dance moves to be on point when this whole thing's over. You know what I mean? I'm going to yeah. go to the banda. I'll even go to the banda, get the quebradita going out. You know what I mean? All that, da, 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 you know? And uh, I'm going to level up, bro. Like, but uh, but here's the, get the other new part. Stuff, bro. The new one, they be like. Yeah. <laughs> or they pick them up. Yep. <laughs> so, so I want to do it in the Zooms, but also I don't know if you have been at a staff meeting or at an event where you have to be in person, socially distanced in a big room. Have you, have yeah. you experienced? Yeah. It sucks, bro. Yeah. It's hard. Like, it, it really sucks, dude. It's one of the like most depressing things I've experienced recently. Yeah. And I was like, this sucks. We need some music, dude. I go, we need some freaking line dancing or some electric slide or something. Like I go, can we just do, and, People think I'm messing around, but I'm not. Like, if I ever get the chance to lead a PD, I'm going to take the video tutorials that we learned dancing here. Hey, guys, get up. Before we go to break, let's all learn how to do a little cumbia right there. And if you, if you don't dance cumbias, I feel sorry for you because we're in a pandemic. We got to, like, take care, you know. But I think I think it will grow. I, I'm like, dude, I'll, I want to be a phenomenal dancer by the time this thing is done, bro. You know what I mean? And like, I was always scared to dance because I don't have that much rhythm. And I was always afraid of looking dumb while I'm learning. But I'm like, I'm already looking dumb, dude, every day in the Zoom. Nobody hey, doesn't matter. Dumber, bro, than sitting in there for five hours. <laughs> yeah, that looks dumb, right? So I'm like, that's that's my new thing. When I make that happen, I, I want to like a big old thing. Like, it's almost like a flash mob, right? Dude, you're like set up for a flash mob already. Yeah. All you got to do is put, put a video tutorial on the thing. Do, 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 do some Bali, like dude let's do that bro like I, i'm gonna start i'm hitting up nupur and i'm like dude we gotta get something going social distancing edu you know look i'll i'll, I'll join it bro because my with my wife we like dancing dude we, we yeah uh, that's the hard part we used to go out we like going out on fridays you know hit the latino clubs be like yeah. y la chona se mueve, y la gente dude. Le grita, you know what i mean dude how about we we make a return to midnight pedagogy and we get that going with some social distancing bro Let's, I'm down. Let's, set, um, let's set it off. I'm down. The uh, let's see. Let me. Uh, I think I think Saturday might be open. It just depends. I got I got some family things, but no, yeah. I'm down, bro. I'm like, I'm totally down. Yeah, even if it's not this week. I mean, whenever, dude. I say whenever. Like we could test yeah. it out, but I think that we have. That's when we have like a lot of people, which is nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? That are willing to do anything. Like yeah. we I'm could. You know, um, I don't know. You let me. You let me. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to show up tonight. I haven't been there in a while, but I'll, I can pitch the idea then, too, and I, I can let yeah. you know. Okay, cool, 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 man, for sure. No, man, I'm down. The uh, Yeah, man, like like I said, bro, that's, that's a cool idea, you know? Again, it's like self-improvement, widening the circle, um, bringing in people, encouraging people to be themselves, to try something different, to expand. It's cool, man. So, um, yeah, dude, anything else? Ah, man, I just, you know what? I appreciate you, man. It's uh, I, like, I wasn't messing around when I said, uh, you know, you and Paul are, are some of my favorite people I've met in the last couple of years, dude. And I met a lot of cool people, bro. But, uh, but, uh, you know, definitely uh, a brother and uh, I love, appreciate your creativity and, uh, and like, I'm in awe of a lot of the stuff you do, man. So just, you know, and I, I think when I, when I hang out with you, I get inspired more and you know what I mean? Even just to let some of my dumb ideas fly, but I think we, like, we, we just kind of, that's the nice risk taking that we need right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, let's go for broke, too. Keep throwing spaghetti on the wall, see what sticks, you know? I know. Make some art. <laughs> yep. 
All right, man. Well, thanks, dude. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I know people are going to get something good out of this. Um, so, all right, Campos, have a good night, man. All right, brother. Thanks, Gonzalez. Laters, bro. Peace.